Welcome to The Snap. This is a segment where we answer frequently asked questions in a very rapid fire format. So let's get right into it. Today, I'm joined again by Will. Uh, Will, you assisted with the previous experiment where we tested being able to tell the difference between torch to torch from a cold start with a generic heating technique. You were wrong. Mm. But you predicted that you'd be able to trick me into believing that a triple or double torch can perform as well as a single. Do you still stand by that prediction? I do, yeah. Um, basically, the way that you use your torch or your induction heater, you are able to um, change the experience drastically, um, get bigger clouds just by the way you heat it. It doesn't necessarily uh, matter what you're actually using to heat it. So we have three 2020 M's here loaded with the exact same material, and we have many more heat sources. I'm not going to know what is being used to heat the devices. I just know that I need to guess what it is. We have a couple of different variables, so it's going to be harder for me to guess but Will's gonna try to make every single one hit as hard as they can. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Let's see what happens. Hey, hello, and you're watching The Snap, brought to you by Dynavap. I'm Michael, and I'm joined by Video Ben. Hello. We're providing blissful commentary as we watch to see if Will can fool Josh into thinking every heating device is a single torch. And it looks like Will has started his experiment by making sure that blindfold is nice and secure. Right you are, Ben. He's using the tried and true stress ball method to test his sight. <laughs> now I'm just like afraid of where they're coming from. Okay, Will is now choosing his first heating device. It looks like it's the Cyclone 2 Triple Torch. That's a good beginner torch, but can he make it hit like a single? That's a great question, Ben. Will is now using the infinite spin technique. It looks like he's holding the vap cap about an inch away from the torch, and the flame is aimed at the base. You know what that means. Josh is going to launch directly to space with that hit. Right you are, Ben. Right you are. Josh has his fingers out. He's ready for that toke handoff. Listening for that click, and there it is. Great vape handoff technique, good vapor production on the first draw. It looks like Josh can handle the base heating. Three quick draws, good vapor production for a first heat up. Oh, this is, <clears throat> this is gonna be tough. Will is looking pretty confident with that first heat up. Right you are. Looks like Will is picking up the Z plus two. Oh, oh, he's putting it back down. What a fake. Looks like Will is actually choosing the Javelin single torch. Josh is bringing out the two fingers early. He's ready for another hit. Good form on the single torch there. Another base heating. Josh is sure in for a relaxing day. And there's the click. Will hands the vap cap off to Josh, and Josh takes his first draw. Do you think he has any idea what he's in for? None whatsoever, Ben. I think Josh is in for another big rip. <laughs> oh, Jesus. I have my guess for this one because it made me cough. Oh, I did think about something with the induction heater because I can hear the torch going, but I can't tell how many jets. When you do the induction heater, because induction heater's one-handed, use the torch at the same time. Yep. Because that will then prove to the audience that. Of course. And it looks like Will is finally going to use the Z plus two. I'm not so sure, Michael. I think that's, yep. The Z plus two dual torch is actually a red herring for the induction heater. Right you are, Ben. But he's not just sticking it into the induction here. Looks like he's pulsing it. That's right. It'll help heat the material more evenly. There's the click and the handoff. Taking a little while in the first draw. Do you think he knows it's an induction heater? Not a lot of vapor on that one. He might have been fooled this time. Okay, now I think it's getting a little bit easier. I have my guesses up here. Looks like Will is finally using that dual torch. The Z plus two really has a distinctive sound. Difficult to use in a blind test. Speaking of distinctive, just a reminder for those of you watching at home, don't forget to respect the click. It's the most important thing you can do to avoid combustion. You don't want combustion? No, you don't. Such a waste of flavor and material. 
Will's got the click, handing off to Josh. Got a little nod from Josh there. Nice cloud, and he's going back for seconds. A lot of good flavor in there. <clears throat> I think he caught those tasty terpenes. I think so too. Let's listen in to see what Josh guesses. Okay. So my guess is, I think the first one was a single. I think the second was the triple. I think you throw me for a loop with the second with another single. And that last one was a single. Interesting guesses from Josh. He's definitely blindfolded. Let's see how many he got right. No. So the order in which we went was the first, the Vertigo Triple Torch. The second that we used was the Vertigo Javelin uh, Single Torch. The third that we used was the Apollo 2 Rover. And the fourth and final device that we used specifically was the Vertigo Z2. Interesting. Second one, and that one you said was the single flame, right? Correct. That one had the least amount of volume. All the rest I felt it immediately in my throat. I felt it in my chest, where you get that little bit of a punk punch. Uh, what were some of the techniques that you were doing for the various torches to get that type of experience? Well, it, it all depends on the experience that you're going for. So if you want thicker, you know, denser vapor, what you're going to want to do is just heat below the bottom of the cap. Um, and just keep the flame farther away. So it will take you longer to do it, but it's just kind of a patience thing. You're gonna get denser rips if it takes you longer uh, to heat up your cap, so. Awesome, and did you do anything special with the double torch? Uh, the double torch was kind of the same method. Um, what I like to do though, if I feel like it's going too long, eventually you will kind of learn how it clicks um, and how long it should take. So if you feel like it's going too long and you may be combusting, you can run the torch up closer to the tip uh, to get it to click. With the rover, did you do anything technique-wise to get that hot of a draw right off the first heat cycle? Yeah, I do find that it's, it's a cool way to do it. Um, you are able to just modulate and just basically engage the heater and then disengage the heater just over and over and over again to slowly allow the heating chamber to, to heat up instead of just a direct contact the entire time. I thought, for sure, like you tried to trick me with several singles and only like one or two maybe of another torch or heat source, but they all had that higher temp. I'd be curious, you know, now that I have this knowledge, doing this at home, and I urge everyone that's watching, if you have multiple heat sources and you live with a roommate or a significant other, have them do the heating for you and do that A-B comparison. I think you'll be really surprised. <clears throat> this is gonna be tough. That first draw, the cloud felt like it was very, 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 very dense and got me a draw that I'm used to only getting from a single torch or similar to the single torch draw that we did in the last video. Overall, very, very impressive. And it shows you the torch or heat source that you use is very, very important when you're starting out in terms of difficulty. But once you get familiar, regardless of the heat source that you're using, you can get whatever experience you're looking for as long as you have the technique. Wouldn't you agree, Will? I do agree, yep. Now, what is your go-to heating source at home? For me personally, I do love the Rover. I have that um, that I use both on the go and at home. Um, if I'm going for old reliable though, I always carry a triple torch as well. Mm -hmm. um, I love the single torch and, and the fact that that provides pretty consistent dense clouds. Um, over, over time though, I've just been able to practice and get almost exactly the same results with a triple torch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would urge everyone like just hold it further away. Uh, kind of like that marshmallow video. Consistent rotation speed. Keep your flame about an inch away from the cap and stop as soon as you hear the click. Focus it far enough away and you'll be able to get those dense clouds. Jet placement, did you care about that at all? Really the only thing that I would consider um, is the farther down you keep it on the tip, um, normally the longer it will take the cap to click, which is going to make a hotter, denser hit for you. I'm very, very surprised at how this turned out. Um, even more so than the last one, simply because we had many more options to choose from. I felt like you put your money where your mouth was. As always, I'm, it's not like I'm out here lying to people, so. <laughs> <laughs> Want to thank everyone for watching this episode of The Snap. Let us know what your favorite heating techniques are in the comments below. What do you typically do when you're looking for that big hit? What type of torture are you using? Or what technique are you using? We'd love to know. And we will see you next time on 
the snap. And that has been the snap. Once again, I'm Retail Josh, and thanks for watching.